So to do this two-point calibration and its evaluation, it's probably easier to show you what I'd like you to do than it is to try to, uh, to explain it in, uh, in the detailed instructions. So let's run this uh, calibration simulation and get some data. And we'll put the data in a spreadsheet. If I'm going to do a two-point calibration, then my first calibration point is going to be to assume that the board is functioning correctly and that if I apply zero voltage on my multimeter that I will get an average output from my board of zero. Standard deviation of course will be zero and there'll be no errors. So that's data point number one. Let's go for data point number two. I run the sketch, it uploads, and if I push the button, I get data repeatedly. If I adjust the potentiometer as high as it can go, I get data that's consistently coming in around 3.3 and 65,000. So let's take one of those data points and use that as our full-scale data point. Now I'm going to add some calculations on this data point. So I've calculated the average of all of these values that I read in. I've calculated the standard deviation of all of these values taken together. I've calculated a voltage based on this average analog read value and a 3.3 volt uh, input voltage. And I've calculated the error between that and the measured voltage on the multimeter, and it's just a little bit different. I've then calculated a value based on using the actual 3.293 voltage and the actual measured input for my full-scale data point, and I get no error at all because at least for this data point, it agrees with itself. Let's put the errors in millivolts so they're manageable sized numbers. Now fill in a bunch of data points in the middle. Calculate averages and standard deviations. If I plot the average analog read value, it looks like a fairly linear relationship between the voltage across the bottom here and the analog read up the side. If I calculate a value of voltage based on just assuming 3.3 volts and, uh, and 2 to the 16th, then I'll get voltages that are pretty close to matching up. Alternately, I could calculate the voltage based on these full-scale values. So for example, this one I'm going to calculate based on the average analog read value we got, but these values alone using the uh, two-point calibration using that full-scale value. The differences are really small, so we'd have to plot only those differences in order to be able to see what's going on. They're all small, and strangely, for some reason, they're all negative, suggesting that maybe we need to look at another possible way of uh, better estimating the data. With what we've done so far, we're getting within 16 millivolts of the correct value. We can go back and look for a better fit, maybe by just trying a different constant. The gray dots are better. I'm not sure if uh, fitting a line will do us any more good. Rearrange a little and uh, look at how big the average error is. Maybe we can adjust the constant. We went from positive to negative, so that was maybe a step a little too far with our fit. Things got a little bit better with a fit, but we may be just stuck with an uncertainty of around uh, 16 millivolts on these noisy measurements. That uncertainty is one half of one percent of the measurement range, so that's actually not too bad. I think I might be satisfied with that.